I gave Jamie his own camera outside. He's working on some of the closet shelving or built-ins or whatever. So we're gonna cut to that, see, uh, you know, what we got. I actually get to do some fun woodworking today. At least I think it's fun. I'm gonna build some closet shelves, which just means cut boards to length and screw them in. And some built-in like shelving units where I actually build kind of like a cabinet actually with no doors and set it in place and then face frame it in place. These are just one by 12s right from the hardware store. They have stain and a couple coats of clear coat on them. A couple more up there on the truck. That is all the material I have. I'm going to be using a few simple tools, just like the chop saw. I'm going to use a domino jig, which is sort of like a biscuit joiner, but it puts in bigger biscuits, we'll call them. They're called dominoes, uh, to hold some of the stuff together. Some of the boards are not wide enough, so I'm going to be using the domino jig to actually butt boards edge to edge and glue them together to make some 16 inch wide boards, because these here are only 11 and a quarter. I made for myself a few very simple drawings to remind myself what I said I would do for the homeowner. And I wrote down the dimensions of everything. And this is how I figured the material I needed. Since I'm doing what I would call fine woodworking today, I decided to go ahead and sharpen up my chisel and a couple of good hand planes so that we can fit stuff to the drywall. If you don't know, a lot of times fitting wood to a drywalled wall is actually kind of tough because they're not actually flat usually. And what I mean by that is a lot of times the corners are built up with some of the drywall mud. This domino tool is a really fantastic way to connect things together. Um, it's like a biscuit joiner, but it's way better, I think, or at least in a different application. It's more like making a tenon, like a mortise and tenon joint is what it's called. And I think this would technically be called a floating tenon, where there's two mortises and one tenon that goes into both mortises. Something interesting about this is that I'm trying to make a shelf board that's 16 inches wide. And uh, by the way, the B stands for back so that I, uh, you know, I wrote on this with a magic marker. I am not gonna rip my extension, this board, to the absolute width until it's all glued together. And then I'll rip the whole board as one piece to its final width in case there is any variation in the width of any of these boards. I don't even have to account for it or think about it at all. Let's take a look at the dominoes here. These are actually just ones that I made. They are small pieces of wood, about an inch wide about two inches long and a little over a quarter of an inch thick. The ones that you buy are much fancier in the sense that they have lots of high-tech features probably built into them that make a really easy job and a good job, but I find that these work just as well. Ooh, that was about too much. You can probably tell already how great of a job the domino does because these boards have just been stuck together. The glue is wet, but I can hold it. Look, I can hold it by the thinner piece here and that whole piece is just sitting there. It's pretty flat already. It's really good at aligning these two and making them flat and straight to each other. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick a clamp on it just to make sure. And uh, I only need one clamp per board. That's all I'm gonna do. Arlo was just using his tri-square to mark a line there on this jam. He was saying when he began being a carpenter, yeah. there was no such thing as a speed square. Didn't so carpenters would carry these up to 12 inches. Yep, that was a 12 inch one of those and, uh, and a framing square, that was it. That's why you like the framing square so much. <laughs> That's, That's why, why I love the speed square so much, <laughs> I guess. No, it's like- It's what we had when I started. Yeah, isn't it crazy? It's like, you kind of go, man, it's that long ago? How old are you? Man, next, is it next? No, a month from now, 
I'll be 70. Dang, so I told you. Jason's like, he's 64. you like 65 or 66. No. I'll be Holy shnikes, dude. Yeah, I'll be 70 and, uh, and April 12th, look out. Wow. Mm. Get, get in there. Hey, I got us a job. Oh, yes. Dude, it looks like a cannon or something. I know what it is. It's a drill. It's a bazooka is what it is. <laughs> it looks so crazy. Let's see if it'll do it. I haven't been down here in a while, but it's still here. The crawl space, not basement. And what we need to do is drill a hole through the bottom of the lowest point of this foundation as a low point drain. What's gonna happen in here is it's gonna get sealed with a 40 mil vapor barrier that goes up the walls and is sealed to make it a sealed crawl space. So there's no vents, there's no way for water to get out if there was a plumbing leak at this point. It could just fill this place up like a swimming pool. We don't want that to happen. So that's the giant drill. We're gonna start by piloting a hole from the inside at the lowest point because I think it's gonna be easier to run that huge drill like up this high instead of like that. So we're gonna do that. We've also installed this Santa Fe FE Oasis 105 permanent dehumidification system down here so that it will stay the correct humidity, not be damp and musty. And this will just be a permanent fixture. It'll kick on when it's needed and it won't run if it's not needed. We've been to a couple conferences and building shows with the guys from Santa Fe. They're great folks and they hooked us up with a great deal on this unit. So if you're looking for some sort of whole house dehumidification, even ones that go in your heat and air ducting system, they have those. And I'll put a link in the video description to their website if you wanna check it out. I think she stole all the bulbs for other places. Is there lights in here? Yeah, there's, there's, oh, <laughs> there's, there's a light right there. yeah, there's no bulbs. Yo, I need the dehumidifier outlet on! The breaker box is upstairs. My man's ready to drill! Mom, meatloaf! Do you want to try plugging it in, maybe? Dude, I thought it was! <laughs> what, you want to plug it? No. Dude, I swear I plugged it in. Today's video is brought to you by the Wild Badger 40-volt battery-powered chainsaw. Yo, 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 yo! That's your Christmas tree, bro. Oh, oh, and yeah. And it's not even real. One of the really cool features about this saw is that it's smart. It adjusts the power and speed according to the workpiece you're cutting through. Like a bigger tree, it'll get more power and then to conserve energy. So you can run longer. If you're cutting through something soft or small, it'll actually not use as much power, which is awesome. The brushless motor on this Wild Badger spins at a whopping 7,500 RPM, spinning the chain around its 16 inch bar at 50 feet per second. Mm. That's how fast it's going. Pretty incredible, actually. I think everybody would agree the number one problem with a gas powered chainsaw is that if it sits for a while and you go to start it and it doesn't start, you can lose your mind <laughs> trying to get done whatever you want to do. So I think having a battery powered saw is a great idea, even if you have a gas powered saw. Plus, if you're just making like a cut here and a cut there and a cut here, having to like constantly start it and stop it versus just pulling the trigger, this is a lot easier. The Wild Badger also has a lot of features that make it very usable. It has a chain break. It's got a tool that comes with it that can take the bar off, adjust your chain tension. And it also has an automatic oil system for your chain, like a really nice chainsaw would have. You just fill a reservoir with bar oil and then your chain is lubricated automatically. And I can keep track of how much battery charge I have with the onboard meter right there. Just press the button. I've run a bunch of different brands of battery powered chainsaws and a ton of gas chainsaws over the years, we've been running chainsaws for a long time. And I'm really impressed with this Wild Badger chainsaw. For only $179, it really will rip through some trees. And if you wanna get one, make sure to check out the link down in our video description below. And thank you, Wild Badger, for sponsoring our video. And for the chainsaw, let's get back to work. Let's get back to work. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna jump in earlier, but I didn't wanna yeah. ruin it. <laughs> you did ruin it. Jason's at the low point here. We're gonna pile it a few inches up. Oh, let's, hey, let's be smart and try to think of where Look the metal for that cricket. is. Yeah, we don't want to drill into one of the rebar cores. Let's try to be smart about it and see if we could say where it's likely there's metal. There's likely there's metal on top of a block. Uh, okay, here. <laughs> can't even hold this thing up. This thing does hook to pressurized water, but we can't reach from here with what we have.
I know you're dying to do this, so I'm gonna go just a minute more, then it's all you. <laughs> he hates standing around. We're through here, and I gotta say, if you did that all day every day, you'd be freaking rocked up. What's up? Nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry, you didn't get to do it. <laughs> No, man. No. <laughs> you don't look mad. There it is. Paperweight. <laughs> Hard that, earned. Get that to the mill. Can you just stand still for a second? Hold your feet together. Okay. Thanks. What are you doing? Based on my survey, the maximum size of two shoes side by side is 10 inches. Now, Ramel, of course, being a lady, her feet are a little smaller than our giant work boots. I'm gonna make my shelf 20 inches wide for two, and then I've got eight shelves. There'll be room for 16 plus pairs of shoes. Is that enough? We'll have to double stack. This shoe shelf is made of a bunch of short pieces. Here they are. I was really careful when I was cutting these to avoid any of the knots being in the end of a board. Here's a really good example. Let me get out my tape measure here, if I can do it while I'm on the camera. 21 inches is my number. You can see it falls in the middle of this really gnarly spot. And the reason I don't want that is because I'm gonna shoot nails in the ends of each of these shelf boards. If I had a giant knot like that, I'm almost guaranteed the nail is gonna pop out and break some of the wood and maybe even shoot myself in the finger. So I just basically waste off a couple inches off the end. I have one of my side pieces here for the shelf and I have a layout stick right beside it. Every one of these is a shelf. There's a lot of them. And I thought it might just be worth checking to see if any of my shelves were gonna fall on a big knot because I have to nail through that also. And I have the option right now, since the layout is asymmetrical, I could flip it one way or another, and if it's helpful to do that, then I certainly am gonna think about it and do it right now. I don't see any knots that are gonna be problematic at this point in time, so I'm gonna mark what I think is the top or the bottom, and so I don't get it switched around in the meantime. doors for a second <sighs> they're <laughs> going for the straight brush I see yeah it's working good huh yeah we're knocking them out and we're out of paint and I'm very glad we're out of paint I are you really reached my limit of doors I can paint done run down I'll tell you what looks tough to do is the edges of these doors yeah I was having Jason pull off the hinge oh really like okay. one half at a time and whoosh, paint I through was wondering how you got it yeah that clean we thought about didn't taking them off yet. but they're all adjusted perfectly everything uh, is perfect i'm like let's just leave them on here yes it's you got to count in the time of the work to redo the adjusting yeah and all that stuff if you take them apart you do you which i think is that. more than what we did all right good story now get out of my way so i can get this board okay <laughs> so i'm painting this front door now and this is the color it's uh purpley and it's got three panels and all the panels are going to get cut in like this I'm gonna be here a while. And it's gonna need two or three coats. <laughs> Take a break from the painting. Jamie and Jono and Arlo have been working in the closet. Shelves, shoe rack, and clothes rack. So um, we're just going looking good in here. Going ours all the way up. Yep. That's going to be a lot of shelving. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. T shirt. And Jamie's building the built in for the other bathroom. Doing it right now. Nice. It's nice and deep. It's, yeah, it is. Did you domino that? 
Um, yeah, they are. The shelves are, but the uh, the cabinet I'll just shoot together with nails mm -hmm. and then stuck the whole thing in place. Nice. So I gotta ask you, why didn't you use plywood on this since you gotta make it deeper than a board? Well, besides not being able to get some like quickly and easily because nobody around here carries high quality plywood, cabinet grade, um, I thought about it and I was like, you know, sometimes plywood stains funny. It you does. ever stain plywood? Yeah. It's blotchy sometimes, you mm -hmm. never know what you're gonna get. So in order to make sure that this looked as high quality as possible and matching the color and appearance of all the rest of the trim, Boom, yeah. I just used the same material. It does it's got some exactly bad. like the trim. I think it's got some base to it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. Jamie actually can play drums for real. If I didn't know better, I would think that this was made out of baseboards. Okay. <laughs> Jamie's got this whole thing built. Now we're gonna see if it fits. <laughs> That's always the fun part. I hopefully gave it just a little wiggle room. Here we go. Oh, not a lot. Hello. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let's keep it even here. Ooh, I love that sound. I was going to face frame it. Hey, yeah. Because I thought the fit might require it. But now I'm looking at it, it might be fine. I, I did put a pencil mark here. I think I can erase that. I was very light with it, just in case. That's why Arlo had that pencil in his mouth for the last two hours, so he can right. erase that. <laughs> so I can follow Jamie around. All right, Jono, final piece ready to go. Sorry. There's nowhere for me to get out of the way. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> We've got a pipe here that we're gonna shove through the hole that we drilled, and it's got this screen on it to keep critters <laughs> out, yeah. right? Yep. And we used this big screen because we were both a little worried that if it actually had to drain and it had a really small mesh screen on it, it just wouldn't drain. It would just get clogged. So that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. If I want water to come out, this is better. Yeah. I can mean, a, spiders will get in there. Can a bug crawl through it? Yeah. Not a mouse. No. Maybe a snake. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's required as far as the screen goes. And actually, just to be totally honest, we don't know what's required as far as will this hole completely pass code or does it have to be like a floor drain or I don't something know. else? But this is really low compared to the rest of the crawl space. When we get our inspection, we'll be notified if this doesn't pass. Yeah, That's but I, I think know. it'll work great. That's why we just did it this way. We're just like, what's going to work good? Do that. I think we'll have to do a little bit of sealant. <laughs> I'm not worried about that okay. at all. I want about that much sticking out. What okay. do you think? I don't think it really matters. Well, I want to be able to take this off. I don't want to get it in there too much. I'm sure yeah. it's in the inside enough. Oh, yeah. You know, so I'm just going to do this kind of spin and fill method here. <laughs> and I have no plan other than I've got several tubes of Lexel here and eventually it will be filled. Yeah. Whoa, I don't want to do that yet, exactly. You know, don't plumbers, they have to spin the pipe when they glue it? They do. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's it's getting there. You're pretty much there. This is how I'm I'm kind of making sure it's all evenly yeah. coated. It, it's kind of funny. We're trying to seal this up really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yet we have a giant hole. That's the plan, yeah. right? Okay. I'm gonna now I'm gonna go ahead and just fill it the rest of the way. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go on the inside and probably do the same thing just to kind of secure it more than anything. I hate that I missed you attaching that mesh to that thing. Yeah, I got like a fun job. Stabbed about a hundred times by that metal. Yeah. Oh, did you get a drain line in for the dehumidifier? I did. Yeah, check that out. It's running a little long right now. Okay. And I did not seal it yet, so I guess yep. now is as good of a time as any. I'm just imagining water just shooting out of here, you know? <laughs> like It might, I don't know. That's a wrap for today. We got a lot done. It didn't look like we got a lot done, probably. Yeah, I, I felt like, John and I were like, oh my God, this is taking us forever. We're, you know, it's like, but then we go, wait, we got the bifolds in. Bifolds, all the closet <laughs> built-ins, all the doors painted again, a yeah. bunch of other stuff. And I think the only woodwork left we're looking around is this piece of wood that's gonna help hide the track on the bifold doors on each one. 
And I think that's all the woodwork. Did just you see what, did painting you see, doorknobs. Did you see what happened to this? Yeah. Like when I did this, I screwed this up, you know, I put them there and it's like they didn't, they didn't, I, at my house, I have them there and they open fine. Yeah, but it, it didn't work. It didn't work and I was like. So what we did <laughs> is we actually just took the hinges out and put this panel, you know, basically put it there, they flipped and uh, it. Got it. It worked. It Amazing. was like, we were like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for our video today. Thanks for building with us. And just a reminder, we sell the tool belts that we wear in the videos you see at PerkinsBuilderBelt.com. It's a great tool belt. I think you would love it, especially if you're a person that needs a tool belt for work like all day long. It's really comfortable and carries all you need without being super bulky. So check that out. Thanks again for building with us. Nice driving. Thanks for keeping it steady. <laughs> Appreciate that.